Hey guys, what's up? This is Fatma Rizwan. I'm the founder of Mera School and today I'm very excited. We have Isha with me. She's the head of ecosystem at Celo Foundation, uh, one of the emerging blockchain ecosystem that's out there in the market and right now in the in the current bull market, everyone is talking about new blockchains and new opportunities and since we are doing this even for developers, right, developers who really want to enter the ecosystem or developers who really want to progress. Yeah. How do you feel about the opportunities that lie ahead in the Celo ecosystem? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe helpful for me to set context for Celo. So Celo is a layer one blockchain. We're transitioning to a layer two. Uh, on Ethereum, we've been around for four years. And just as like a chain, our mission has been prosperity for all. We're very mission focused. So essentially what it entails is that we help our focus has always been building out real world use cases for crypto and Web3. Uh, we focus on emerging markets and solving real world problems, right, yeah. for everyday folks. And so, just like as a short thing, like our chain isn't the chain where you would have a ton of perps trading, right? That's never going to be what our chain is. Our chain is all about like how do we help everyday users kind of use crypto in a way that is easy and accessible, yeah. in a way that like you are familiar with, right? So it's not reinventing the wheel, it's like taking what you're familiar with and then yeah. bringing it on chain, right? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna give you an example of something that we built out in the ecosystem, it's called the MiniPay wallet, right? Hmm. It's essentially a wallet that's embedded in the browser, which is Opera MiniPay, that is pre-installed in every Android device, right? Yeah. And the cool thing about this wallet is it's an Africa-focused wallet only, so it's currently live only in Kenya, Nigeria, and Ghana, but the thing about this is it's a stablecoin only wallet. Yeah. So think of some countries in Africa or like some parts of the world yeah. where you have massive currency fluctuations, right? So in a period of four weeks, if you have like a hundred dollars as like something in your wallet, that can go down to like sixty dollars, right? Yeah. With no, you've done nothing and it, your value kind of becomes so little, right? And so what we're enabling is like a stablecoin wallet where your hundred dollars stay a hundred dollars, yeah. right? It, it doesn't, and so then to build on top of that, right? Yeah. Like, so if let's suppose your mom or your grandmom want to save their money in a dollar denominated currency, yeah. what, what else do you think Do you think they'll want to do? They'll want yeah. to save, maybe? They'll want to earn some interest or some like yield on it? Like, yeah. I want to say, I'm going to say interest because that's really simple, yeah. right? For like, my mom to understand, she doesn't understand the word yield, right? Yeah. So like, super simple things like that, right? You want to earn income, so like maybe a saving, saving in a way that is like easy and for her to understand, right? Like, across the world, you have of saving circles, yeah. so can we bring that on chain, okay. right? right. Um, can we also then bring like lending on chain that is super simple, so like yeah. lending in the real world is like you go to a bank and then the bank gives you a loan, right? Yeah. But like when you go to like some of the DeFi lending pieces where you have to put collateral, blah, 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 it gets really complicated, really yeah. scary, right? So can I put collateral on your behalf or mm. can my community put collateral on my behalf and then you can lend against it, right? Yeah. So really simple, really easy everyday use cases are really important for yeah. like, in the next bull market, right? Yeah. If you're gonna onboard the next billion users, yeah. then the next billion users need to be brought to crypto in a way that they are familiar yeah. with. That's like essentially our thesis. Yeah. That's fantastic. I think I would want to take a step back and yeah. want to understand your Web3 story as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like my background is I come from TradFi, I worked in private equity and M&A, and then I went to Africa and I worked for FinTech, and I think like I came across Web3 based on like a couple of talks that I went to while I was at university, and so the technology to me was really, really interesting, but the way the technology was used, like I barely understood it, right? Like yeah. when you go on chain, you suppose like you go on with your MetaMask wallet, right? Yeah. And then you are like, you're doing a transaction in one currency and then say, oh, you don't have another currency for gas fee, right? All of that stuff is so scary, right? Yeah. And so when I, when I came across Celo, Celo kind of makes it really easy. You can yeah. onboard just using like your mobile phone number. You don't need, you don't have like a crazy wallet address that's like OX blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And so like Celo was just like a natural fit for me because it, yeah. it was like, Crypto easy, but crypto yeah. also that is mission aligned towards yeah. like what I want to achieve with my life. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. That's fantastic. What is your deepest conviction, and how do you feel the next billion people are going to enter the Web three ecosystem? How do I think? I think like stable coins are really great because. Yeah. I know across the world, there are multiple, like I said, like there's multi currencies where currency fluctuations is massive. So having something that is, it could be like a dollar denominator or some other currency, right? Providing people with a safe haven currency where they yeah. can store their money in a, in a currency that like doesn't fluctuate so much. I think that's really important. And also making it really simple and easy to understand, right? Like 
abstract away all the complexity, make yeah. it really simple. The internet is really simple now. Right. You don't think of HTTP, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Crypto needs to come to you in a way that you're familiar with, essentially. Yeah. yeah. And then what does it mean for developers that Celo, Celo is transitioning to the L2? Yeah. Right? And how does it mean uh, in terms of efficiency with respect to the blockchain as well? Yeah, so we haven't picked a stack yet. So we've not picked the stack in which we're transitioning to the L2. I think a lot depends on that. But essentially as a chain, the chain remains the same. Essentially it's our engineers that I need to do all the work. But like if you are a builder or a developer building a protocol on top of Stellar, we are always going to remain EVM. Some of the stuff on our chain is really interesting. Like I mentioned, like we have something called Social Connect where any wallet or wallet that's on the Stellar chain you can use a phone number to kind of like do the address map and you don't need like complicated private key address, yeah. right? The other thing that I think is really unique to our ecosystem is that we have um, multiple gas currencies, right? Mm -hmm. So we have native USDC and USDT. And so if you are a builder in our ecosystem and you only want to do, let's suppose, USDC transaction, yeah. right? Yeah. You don't need another currency. You don't need sell or anything amazing. for gas. Like it's just USDC. Kind of makes it really simple for yeah. the end user. So if you're yeah. a developer and you're thinking about making crypto easy, then our ecosystem is like a place like, I would recommend you check out because like we have a, some of the key building blocks that make yeah. crypto super simple and accessible yeah. for the retail yeah. user. And now I feel like there are too many options for the developers as well. Yeah. Layer zeros, then layer one, layer two, yeah. and now there is a conversation about layer three. Yeah. Right? There are some players out there right yeah. now. So how, how do you think a developer should think about picking an ecosystem? What are maybe top three things they, that they should consider when they are figuring out which blockchain ecosystem they really want to embrace for the next five years? So I think every ecosystem has their niche, right? There's some ecosystems that are super DeFi specific, yeah. right? And so if you're building a DeFi dApp, right? Yeah. And you're looking for like institutional capital, right? There's ecosystems that like focus on that. If you're building an LST, LRT, there's some ecosystems that just focus on yeah. that. And so like it depends on what you are building for, who your audience is, who your niche is, what is your niche. And to be honest, each ecosystem has a vibe. Um, yeah. It's a weird thing to say, but if we do, every ecosystem has a vibe, right? Yeah. It's where you feel most at home. Yeah. yeah. And wherever you get the most support, to be honest, yeah. right? So what is the vibe of Celo? I think we're very mission aligned and very mission focused. We want to onboard the next billion, right? And making it really simple and easy for the end user, which is yeah. essentially the retail user in our yeah. case, right? Yeah. And so we're becoming, we were called the home of refi, which is regenerative finance. We're now trying to call ourselves the home of stable coins. Like, like I mentioned, we have a couple of new stable coins and yeah. we're trying to always onboard more. I think our vibe is like, if you want to build real world applications, um, yeah, Salo's the place for yeah. you. Yeah. And then maybe what is your wish list? The kind of products or projects that you want to see in the Web3 ecosystem by developers? Like today, yeah. if a developer has to think about any problem they want to solve, what yeah. do you think is like the hair on fire problem in the Web3 ecosystem a developer should really pick and they'll be able to fundraise and build the next big company? Yeah. As I see crypto adoption kind of like move across the world, I see a lot of really interesting use cases. One is Forex, right? Like, um, like Forex, options trainings are really interesting nobody's i mean people are doing it but like it hasn't built gone mass adoption yeah. and i think it'll like increase as more and more people kind of adopt over the world so i think forex is a really good good use case i'm seeing a lot of like real world assets coming on chain but real world assets currently are all private credit or public credit i think there's a bunch of other assets that can come especially um, commodities think gold silver agri any kind of commodity right like i think those are really interesting um, other use cases that I think are really interesting, all a little bit more stablecoin focused, but like emerging market stablecoins in my mind are really interesting. Think of like the Singapore dollar. Yeah. I know it's people are working on the Singapore dollar stablecoin or the INR, etc. I think yeah. those are really interesting use cases. Gaming is always fun. I yeah. think it's because like it kind of like has like mass appeal. Yeah, those are a few use cases yeah. I think would be interesting. And then what's what's the benefit for a developer who is entering the Celo ecosystem? Is there a foundation? How, how are you supporting innovations and developers who want to enter the space? Yeah, so I sit at Celo Foundation, so there's definitely a foundation. And we have a lot of developer-focused activity that we run. We have, we're part of eGlobal, so go meet our team at each and every eGlobal. There's a hackathon that's always sponsored by Spello. And then apart from eGlobal, actually we do a lot of work in terms of workshops and boot camps, et cetera. Um, a few areas that are focused for us, stuff like Africa, we run like Africa-focused boot camps in the region, South America-focused boot camps. So yeah, like, and also I think 
as an ecosystem, we're super approachable to so develop as an issue. Yeah. I mean, you can reach us on Discord, Twitter, anywhere, and like yeah. we're happy to kind of like um, yeah. respond. But and quickly want to talk about the meme coin frenzy which is happening yeah. in the past three months and everyone is saying this bull market is all about new blockchains or meme coins. Yeah. Right, so what do you think about that? Do you feel like this is the best projection of how the Web3 ecosystem is going to be like? You tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. To be honest, like I, I think like there's always a trend. Like the last time there was NFTs and DeFi. I think there's always one specific theme or trend. Yeah, maybe yeah. meme coins are it this time. But like, I'm hoping that we're smarter than that. We're just yeah. coming out of a really long bear market. Bear market yeah. I hope like a few of us based up there are focusing on like building Web3 and building yeah. products in Web3 that are like actually fulfilling a purpose as opposed to, I love meme coins, right? They bring yeah. a lot of attention, <laughs> kind of like help all of us go richer or poorer yeah. depending on where you buy. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's, it's important like focus on like what's sustainable for the future in the long term, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely go build out a meme coin product, but like in parallel with something that's like Meaningful something people meaningful want. and that'll sustain for like at least two or three years. Yeah. yeah. How do you think the future of a developer in Celo is going to look like in the next five years? Yeah. Uh, the future of a developer, I think really well. We've had a bunch of like developers that have been in an ecosystem that have spun up a few projects and then those projects become, they fundraise for the project, become independent and kind of spin up a few more. So I think yeah. like developers in the ecosystem are pretty happy. Yeah. But again, right, like very different, very mission aligned, very, yeah. Very, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Any last message? Any last thoughts? No, just keep building and chugging along. Um, Web3 is really, it's a really unique place in the world where everybody is really approachable. Ask questions, reach out, go to Twitter, reach out to anybody you want to. You do probably get a response. Like people are friendlier than you'd expect out <laughs> in the world. So we're like, yeah, yeah. keep building, keep, keep hacking. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank Amazing. you so much, Isha. Yeah, thanks. thanks a lot. Of course.